Oh, say can you see? All right. I don't want to show up, Lady Gaga. Um, so, hey, what are we going over this week? The progressives or the populists or the muckrakers. It, it kind of, in the New York State regions, it all gets filtered into the same thing, mostly. right? The populist uh, term or phrase or political party, they really become the populist, is also known as the progressives. Um, and those people who call themselves progressives, uh, many of the ones that we're going to talk about were also muckrakers. And these muckrakers are, are really trying to fix the evils uh, of the industrial age. If you stop and think, stop, think, what we've been talking about this week, um, a lot of it's been industrialization and immigration, and that because of this immigration industrialization, we see urban centers, um, you know, across the country, but most specifically on the Atlantic coast, New York, um, on the East coast, New York, uh, Chicago, Detroit, okay, um, we see these urban centers grow. Now, about 12 million immigrants are going to come through Ellis Island, which is located in uh, New York City. If you guys ever get a chance to visit there, there's a ton of history, and you get to see this experience. Uh, they stop the people. They check them for diseases. Um, you know, They want to know what language uh, they spoke, things of that. Uh, if they were sick, oftentimes uh, they'd put them back on a ship and uh, send them back. So we have this thing going on in this country, uh, the turn of the century, uh, the 20th century, the 1900s. Uh, these new immigrants, these new immigrants, right? It was a negative connotation are coming over. They're mostly from southeastern Europe, uh, for example, Italy and um, Russia. And these uh, immigrants are being called new immigrants, uh, really because, well, they're coming in and they're taking jobs of the old immigrants. And these old immigrants are from Northwestern Europe, uh, for example, Great Britain, Ireland. Uh, and, you know, some of the workers within some of these uh, factories and industries like Standard Oil and Carnegie Steel, they're trying to unionize. They're trying to get better wages for themselves. Uh, but literally, uh, bosses would be on the docks of New York saying, come on, uh, we got jobs for you. Because if the unions didn't have any power, uh, means you didn't have any workers to replace them, then strikes would work. But, um, well, they do have workers to replace them. They're called immigrants. For the regents, you guys, you definitely want to know the difference between new and old immigrants. And you want to be able to write about them, too, if you need to. Now, last week, we spoke about the Granger movement. And remember what the Granger movement was, actually this cartoon that I have up here for you is a perfect example of what it is. These Grangers, these farmers, have gotten themselves in trouble. Uh, they owe a lot on credit. Uh, their agricultural products are not worth very much, and railroads are charging them a large amount of money. So this is really uh, the beginning of the populist party, this Granger movement. Okay. Now, one of the things that the Grangers want the government to do is they want them to control the railroads. Of course, the governments won't do that. Um, you know, they might start to regulate prices for the Grangers, but they're not going to take over the railroads. Now, the other idea that the Grangers have is free unlimited coinage of silver. Okay, so what that was is back in this time, there was not a lot of money in circulation. Uh, you used to be able to trade in your bills for both silver and gold. Um, so they want to increase the availability of that. What that would do for farmers, grangers, is that it would actually cause inflation. Inflation is the devaluation of the dollar, which means prices go up. So in that way, uh, grangers would be able to sell their um, you know, corn, uh, wheat for more money. So that was the granger movement. So one of the muckrakers that we talked about this week was Jacob Rees. And it's very important for you guys to remember that Jacob Rees uh, wrote the book, How the Other Half Lives, and uh, he also took pictures of people living in these uh, cities and in these tenements. 
Um, I hope you can take a look a second and look at these pictures. Um, these are kids surviving in the city. Remember, the, the conditions of the tenements were terrible. Uh, just hundreds of people living in uh, a single building. Uh, but different from that, sometimes there was up to 10 or 12 people living in a single room without indoor uh, plumbing, uh, without running water inside. So the conditions in the city, uh, Jacob Reese wants to show the other half, the rich, uh, how the poor were living in hopes that they would start to either give money, charity, or maybe start to create some new institutions to help the poor. So Jacob Reese, muckraker and progressive. We also call Jane Adams a progressive and a muckraker. And remember, when we're using these terms, I hope you think of Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. They also call themselves progressives. So remember, progressives are uh, claiming to help people improve their lives, improve their standard of living. Now, Jane Adams, uh, she's kind of a neat character. She comes from a very affluent family in Chicago, and she sees the tenement housing. She sees the slums, and she wants to make people's lives better. She creates Hull House in the middle of downtown Chicago amongst these slums. And what it becomes is a kindergarten. Uh, it becomes a social club. It becomes a daycare, uh, among other things. Um, remember, Jane Addams wants to improve people's lives. You uh, certainly want to know that she was a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Uh, she helps to create a child labor law. She wants to end sweatshops. Uh, she also wants to create a juvenile justice system so that these young immigrant kids who are getting in trouble for minor offenses, you know, stealing fruit, uh, don't end up in a criminal system surrounded by uh, real bad and evil adults. So our next muckraker is Upton Sinclair, author of The Jungle. I love this quote, I aimed at the public's heart and by accident I hit it in the stomach. He really set out to write a book about the working conditions of the meatpacking industry, but as people read his book, such as uh, President Teddy Roosevelt, uh, they started to understand that the meatpacking industry was making people sick. If you take a look at this picture right here, you can see the sawdust on the floor. Uh, you can see the meat that is uh, just sitting on a wooden wagon. Um, you know, the meat's just hanging there. We talked about how in the book um, he wrote that the roof leaked and the water leaked on the meat. Um, because of his book, though, Upton Sinclair changes the meat packing industry. Uh, the government passes a couple of laws, the Pure Food and Drug Act, in the Meat Inspection Act. And this is going to help make the American people uh, more safe when it comes to uh, purchasing their groceries and most especially their meat. Now Teddy Roosevelt also at this time starts the conservation movement. And if you take a look at this political cartoon, it was really about preserving the environment. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt is going to be the first president to create national parks and national forests. He was a big outdoorsman, and uh, he believed that preserving this country for future generations was incredibly important. You know, you should be able to link Teddy Roosevelt's conservation movement to what's going on in the world today. Uh, when it comes to protecting our environment, to global warming, to trying to stop it, it would be great if you could make that analysis. We also need to talk about Ida Tarbell as being a progressive. Now, a quick story about Ida Tarbell. Her father uh, actually lost his oil business to uh, John Rockefeller. Remember, Rockefeller owned Standard Oil. Um, and this really gives her some incentive uh, to investigate the Standard Oil Company. Um, what she did is through her investigative journalism, she found papers to prove that the Standard Oil Company was using some bad business practices to force others out of business. And of course, under the Sherman Antitrust Act and the anti, or I'm sorry, the Clayton Antitrust Act, uh, this was illegal. So the Populist Party grows, and it grows from the Granger Movement. Remember, the Granger Movement was about farmers and uh, the railroads were not treating them fairly. 
the farmers had uh, accumulated a lot of debt. They owed a lot of money. Uh, so this populist party comes about, and uh, one of the guys who's going to run is Williams Jennings Bryant, and we'll talk about him later more in history. Uh, but he runs under the idea, one of the ideas, of you know the government trying to regulate railroads, but even more importantly, uh, the unlimited coinage of silver. Now, the point of this is that in this time, you could trade in your money and actually collect silver or gold, but there's not a lot of money around. Now, if we create more of it, it would create inflation. Inflation would allow farmers to sell their products at a higher price. So farmers really flock to the populist part. So at the turn of the century with industrialization, we also see the growth of labor unions. And remember, the purpose of labor unions is uh, for people to collectively come together to ask for better wages, for uh, working conditions, better working conditions, safer working conditions, uh, you know, and eventually maybe sick pay, eventually maybe vacation days, you know, things like that. But people were going to have to come together and do this because separately they were not powerful. But as they did this together, as more and more people joined, unions became more and more powerful. And thus, we even see unions today in the 21st century. For example, I'm part of the Windsor Teachers Union. This first set of pictures is actually from ladies who worked for the Triangle Shirtwaist. Remember when we were watching the video, America, the Story of Us, we saw that tragedy of 130 girls who lost their lives uh, because there was only one entrance, because the door opened in and not out, because the sprinkler system didn't work. Uh, strikes where people were walking out of work. They refused to work. Um, thus, it was taking money out of uh, the owner's pockets. So a strike, and what you see here is a picket line. They're actually marching in front of the business uh, so that customers and or replacement workers called scabs couldn't go in or out. Uh, we also had things as boycotts. Boycott was a refusal to buy a product. And if you refuse to buy a product, again, it takes money out of people's pockets. Um, so it was another way for the people, the workers, to gain power over these industrial jobs. Now, there was uh, other strikes, such as what was going on in Chicago at the Haymarket affair that we'll learn about a little bit later, uh, where this guy named August Spies was starting to break up the workday. He said eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, and well, eight hours of relaxation or do whatever you want. During this progressive movement, um, some new terms are created, some new powers for the people are created. Uh, one of them is initiative. And what initiative means is that you uh, or I could actually propose a, a bill so we don't have to wait, wait for legislators to do it. Uh, the next one is referendum. Referendum is a direct vote from the people on really, it usually happens on controversial subjects, but not always. For example, uh, Mr. Andrews sometimes wants to purchase new bu buses that are different from the budget that he wants to propose. So he'll have a referendum just on purchasing buses, and people can come to the school and vote yay or nay of whether they want to spend the money to buy buses. Uh, why would politicians use it? Well, for example, uh, gay marriage is a very controversial issue. Half of the population of this country is for gay marriage, and half of the population is against it. So if you're running for office, well, you really don't want half the people to be mad at you. So what you do is you offer a referendum, a direct vote, and say, uh, State of New York, do you want gay marriage? And, uh, well, I guess we did, uh, or we do, even though it wasn't a referendum of the people. It was decided by the legislature. Um, the next one is recall. What recall allows us to do is to recall or take back an elected official. Perhaps an elected official promises us one thing, uh, but does something completely different or completely opposite. This allows us to recall that official uh, before the next election. Uh, because, jeepers, if you're governor, that's every four years. Or if you're a uh, state senator, that could be every six years. Speaking of senators, it was at this time in our country's hi history, boy, I'm having a hard time with that word today, that our federal senators, 
right? So at the federal level, at the top layer of government, are actually not elected by the people. Uh, they're really uh, elected, well, gosh, some of them pay for their positions. Some of them get paid to hold their positions. It was very uh, a very corrupt system. Uh, many times the House members or governors or the people in power in the state would put these senators in power to uh, vote legislatively uh, to protect uh, the people who put them in power. So uh, the progressives wanted to change this. Thus, we're going to add another amendment to the Constitution. It's the 17th Amendment. The 17th Amendment now allows direct election of senators. That means we, the people, vote for our, both our senators and our House members. So again, uh, the progressives uh, making things better for people. Okay, peeps and peepettes, that's the end. Uh, boy, the progressive era is so important. Very often the Regents is going to allow you to choose this as something you can write about on one of the essays. Uh, so make sure you go back and look at this. And man, know those muckrakers, know those authors, know the changes that they made, know the laws uh, that were created. The end.